Hi, the Mud Broker here. Today I'm going to do a video showing you how to smooth up rough cast iron. You may have seen this in my other, this in my live stream last time around. This is a big number 14 Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain Series skillet and the inside of it is pretty rough. And I'm going to show you the right way, or at least one of the right ways, of smoothing that up. It also work if you have something like a newer lodge and you don't really like the rough pebbly texture and you want to smooth that out a bit. It's the same technique. So, before we get underway, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon. Kay's Kissed, Benedict Riggers, Joy Jones, Damian Bamer, Leo, Theodore Engelke, Valentin Toman, Rudy Bellano, Kiasby, John Wheeler, CJ, Sarah, and Jim Price. In their honor, I'm going to have some bourbon, a little boulette, or boule, however you pronounce it. Here's to you guys. Your support is greatly appreciated. And since I started memberships on my channel, I have members to thank too. The Needy Homesteader, Brian's Aquatics, Grampy Lobster, Comfort Doll, Killer Miller, Lance Allen, Dizzy D, and Concrete Sailors. And in your honor, I'm going to have still more bourbon. Your support is greatly appreciated and I thank each and every one of you for your continuing support. If you'd like to join the channel, there's a button down below you can click on or you can go over to Patreon and become a patron. Anyway, set this aside, move my camera down, and we will get underway. Whoop, a little bit there, that's good. Now when you smooth up cast iron, you don't want to use a grinder or something of that nature because I gotta flip my there we go. When you smooth up cast iron, you should use a random orbital sander like this. If you use a grinder, especially with a hard grinding wheel, you will gouge the bottom of your pan and you'll end up with thin spots which will are liable to cause cracking or warping. You also don't need to get out all of the pitting. This has got quite a bit of different kinds of pitting on it. There's a lot of light little pitting up in here. Down here there's some heavier pitting. And trying to get out the really deep heavy pits, again you'd end up making thin spots. It'll make it heat unevenly and it can crack and can warp a lot easier because it doesn't heat evenly. It's a pretty simple process. I have a coarse 50 grit sand pad on this and I'm just going to run this around the inside and get her smoothed up. Went and tore right into that and forgot something. This makes a fair bit of dust and I'm doing this indoors so I have my vacuum cleaner and I'm going to use this to try and control the dust a little bit. This is about a half an hour's worth of work and I went through three sanding discs on the uh, 50 grit course. And you can see it's really made quite a bit of difference. It's taken out a lot of that real fine pitting. There's still quite a bit of the medium pitting and the heavy pitting down here. But that's all the farther I need to go because just running my hands over the surface rather than having sharp edged pits all over the place, it's taken the edges off of them and it's smoothed it out quite a bit. So what I'm going to do now is scrub this up, get my wood stove going, and I'm going to put a couple of coats of seasoning on this just to keep it from rusting. And if I have time yet tonight, I'll put probably three or four coats on there to help fill in these pits a little bit. Now if I was doing this with a new lodge pan, I would get a much smoother result because with pits, 
you're trying to remove the entire surface and get the surface lowered down to the depth of the bottom of the pits and that's a lot of material to remove which I don't really want to remove all that much with a rough pan like a lodge what you're doing is you're knocking down the high spots and getting those down so there's a lot less material material to remove and it'll uh, get a lot smoother finish now I just used the coarse grit discs on this and I'm not going to go any finer because you don't need to get these polished to a mirror finish I've seen a lot of people do that and you just don't need to do that it just makes it more difficult to season and this is plenty smooth and uh, I'm real happy with the way this has turned out anyhow I'm going to get my stove going I'm going to scrub this up and I will be back once that's underway okay my oven isn't quite all the way up to temperature yet but before long it'll be screamingly hot I got this warmed up good I'm going to give it a coat of easy beasy I've been using this quite a bit lately a fellow here on YouTube named Stephen Strawn sells it and it works real nice now any seasoning the process you do in the oven you're really just putting down a base so this will still have to be broke in after we get it get it uh, seasoned up in the oven but this stuff gives you a real good start on it so I kind of like it well I really like it anyway rub some on take a cloth spread it around good wipe off the excess and give it a nice even coat nice thin even coat get everything coated up good Let's see that looks good get the other side and the outside I like this stick it's really handy for applying it and no this isn't a uh, sponsored video okay. give that a good coat on the back And we'll move around down here. And in the oven to go for an hour or so. I'll be back and we'll give this probably two or three coats yet tonight. Okay, you can probably see the needle on my heat gauge is pretty much pegged out on the oven. And that's where you want it to be for seasoning things. We'll get this guy out. Ah, oh yeah, that's looking good. Set him up here. Bring him up so you can see. There we go. And this is going to be way too hot right now. Yeah, it's 410 degrees. Way too hot to put the next coat on. So. I'll set this up on my little stands over here. I'll let that cool off a bit and then uh, come back and put another coat on and put her back in the oven. This is cooled down to about 250 degrees so I can give it another coat now. The color looks a little bit uneven, and that's because the uh, pitted parts look a little bit darker than where it's really smoothest, but that's not really going to be a big deal, I don't think. We'll see you later. But, flip it over. Get the 
other side. Melt some on. Move around the side. You want to be careful doing this because it is still pretty hot and you'll burn the hell out of yourself if you touch bare iron with your hand. I've also got a bit more on there than what I need right now, but I will wipe her all off again with a cleaner cloth. This one's got a lot of build up on it from the uh, from the easy beasy, and you don't need quite that much on there. So I'll wipe it off. So we got just a thin little layer on there. Handle good. And we're ready to go back in the oven. I'll give it one more application after this, but I probably won't show that and I'll show you what it ends up like when I'm done. Okay, I'm going to take this out for the, this has had three coats of the Easy Beasy now. I'm going to take it out and we'll have a look at her. Get up here you. Pretty hot. But that looks pretty good. It's also a bit too hot for my hot pad. But it's looking pretty good. I'm going to let this cool off and give it a coat of uh, clarified butter and let it finish cooling. And uh, seeing as I was getting late, tomorrow morning we'll fire up the stove again and we'll break this in. I'll see you tomorrow. Here we are the next day and it occurred to me that this might not have been the best demonstration of smoothing up cast iron because I have to leave so much of the old pitting in there because you're really not going to get that out without taking out tons and tons and tons of metal. So, since most people ask me about smoothing up lodge cast iron, I have here a number 8 lodge. This is a pretty new one. This is the uh, current style of production. This is what you get if you go to the store right now and buy yourself a number 8 lodge skillet. And I smoothed that up. I didn't take the seasoning off. I just sanded it out. And this is about 45 minutes worth of work. If you look close you can see there's a few here and there little deeper pits that I didn't get out. And there's a little bit of pitting around the edges that's not really pitting. It's just the little bottoms of the pits. And uh, I didn't take them out because it's really nice and smooth already and you reach a point of diminishing returns. The first 15 or 20 minutes you'll get three-fourths of the way to this point. You'll really smooth it up a lot and after that it takes longer and longer to get the surface down to the point where you get the really fine little pitting out and uh, it's not really worth the time and trouble to get it all out. You can if you want but you know, it might take you a couple more hours actually to get this down to where it's all entirely smooth. But anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fire up the stove. I'm going to put one coat of seasoning on this just to show you how this pit takes up seasoning after it's been sanded. And while this is in the oven seasoning, I'm going to break in this pan, this big old bugger here, by uh, frying up a load of potatoes for breakfast. Or, well, it's getting close to lunchtime now. So, I will be back once everything is heated up in the stove and we're ready to start cooking. Well, my stove is hot. My pan is warmed up good. Take a couple of temperatures here. Oh yeah. Heated up nice and even. It's running about 380, 375 degrees. And, we'll load her up with some clarified butter. Hopefully I have enough because when I do my first my first uh, cook in a pan, I almost always cook potatoes with a pretty generous amount of oil in there. 
you don't want to deep fry them, but you want to have enough to come up the sides and have a pretty good amount in the pan itself. So, I'll go get this here. Whoops. Splash myself with hot butter. That's not good. And I think I'll need a little bit more than that. A couple more good sized chunks. This isn't enough to have a little cooking oil on hand, but that should do her. Once I get that all melted down, get the oil good and hot, and I'll throw my potatoes in. The reason why I use potatoes for the first time when I'm breaking in a pan is because they shed starch and that starch will get into all the cracks and crevices and it uh, will carbonize. That's what gives you your nice black surface and it seals up those cracks and crevices so that the surface of the pan is nice and smooth and the food itself isn't in direct contact with the iron. And that's what makes things non-stick is the fact that you're not quite touching the not quite touching the iron. I think I'm hot enough with my oil. Yeah. And I slice my potatoes lengthwise so that they cover more area. guys frying along. I have that lodge skillet in the oven and that's heating up real good. By the time I'm done with these that should be just about ready to have a look at it and see how it's doing. I'll try to cover the bottom of the pan as much as you can. around a little bit. Yeah, that'll work. Set the rest of my potatoes aside. I gotta grab my salt and pepper. You can keep an eye on these for me. Give it a little salt. I'm almost out of pepper. But we'll get these guys going. And I like to scrub the potatoes around in the bottom of the pan a little bit because that helps to work the starch in. And I'll spin my pan around so... It heats even all the way around. I think I want to be just a little bit hotter, so I'll move this a little closer to the fire.
Alrighty, I'm going to leave these guys in the pan for a minute. I'm going to take this over here, set it up on that to cool. Pan's still hot so they'll keep cooking for a while. And I'm going to come down here, grab that little lodge skillet and see how that's doing. See, that took seasoning very well. You can tell that it soaked in good. It didn't uh, beat up and just sit and just sit on the uh, surface like it would if you had cleaned that up with a grinder or a wire wheel. Come spring, once I can work outside again, I'm going to do some videos showing you the wrong way of smoothing up a pan and what makes it real hard to season and why. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you feel so inclined, please hit the join button or check me out over on Patreon. For my next video, I'm going to be doing a live stream for members only. I think I'll give you a little bit of a history lesson. If you want to know what it is, you'll have to join to find out. Anyway, talk to you later. See you next time.